Welcome to Mobile Legends Wild Rift. Yo guys, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to another new update analysis brought to you by Assassin Dave. Today's update, we got a lot of new stuff to unpack. I mainly want to talk about 10 exciting news, not necessarily exciting, 10 news that's worth noting, in my opinion. The overall sensation I got from this update, including the previous ones, are mobile legends are moving closer and closer to League of Legends Wild Rift feel. I mean, the smart lock from the other tech setting, that was straight up from the League of Legends Wild Rift launch trailer that we saw from a few months back, right? Maybe eventually the only difference we're gonna see are probably the heroes, you know? I think the game pace and everything gonna be similar, um, which I personally don't have a problem with because switching back and forth between games, this is gonna make it easier for people who wanna play both games. And let's quickly jump into the 10 pointers I wanna talk about today. Number one is for all those Granger lovers out there who spend a lot of money buying the Granger Lightborn skin in the previous patches, well, good news, Granger finally received a buff. Granger has been kind of bad for the past few months now. You know, finally, they realized Granger was kind of bad. They kind of buffed it, right? They increased skill and damage by a little bit. But I think this is actually enough to notice a difference. The base damage increased from 30 to 45. This is a 50% increase per bullet. The numbers may all seem small, but when we're talking about patch notes, guys, you have to understand the patch notes, you have to read them from a percentage perspective, right? Like, look at what is number now? compared to the, what's the number before the update. Look at the percentage change. That will give you a better perspective. So we'll see how Granger is gonna perform after the buff. The second thing is Martis. Silent Fighter Martis finally got a buff and then a huge one. All right, first is damage increase on the skill one. Another thing is ultimate. Significantly reduce the decay speed of movement speed gain after killing the target. Basically, if you kill somebody with your ultimate, you're gonna run like a freaking mad person for a long period of time without a decay on the movement speed. I think this change is gonna be crucial. Martis might become meta again. Even in the current meta, Martis is already kind of hard to kill. I mean, he has a lot of immunity, a lot of mobility, and obviously he has Karina's all, right? <laughs> if you kill somebody, he resets, and they start running like a madman. Get a huge movement speed, attack speed boost. So, I don't know, man. I think this is gonna make Martis meta. We'll see it when it comes out. I look forward to it, because I wanna play Martis. The next thing is Somana. So mana magic power bonus of each attack increased by 15% out of the 35% originally, which is close to 50% increase. I mean, on the magic power bonus. So if you build full AP, full magic power, Sylvana skill two is gonna do insane amount of damage. Magic lifestyle gain changed from 100% a flat to 80% to 120%. So basically, they go from 80% on on a level one ultimate, 100% on level two, 120 on level three. Damn, Sylvana scaling just got a lot better, right? This here late game is gonna be insane what i like to see on savannah guys is make her ultimate like not purifiable basically if you if she locks someone down they cannot purify to get away because Sylvana's ultimate is already not that strong if you look at how everybody can just take a purify and just you know purify away from Sylvana's ultimate uh, and it's so hard to land too like the animation takes forever if you land it good but uh, i can purify away if you miss it well too bad i'm gonna kill you i mean either way Sylvana's ultimate is kind of weak i think her other attributes including her other skills are kind of fine as it is right now i don't see the necessity to change them however her ultimate i really want to see like a suppression not necessarily that you can do anything like grand franco's all or kaja's all it's more of a just restriction but you can purify away so you can only stay in that circle whether you have purify or not i like to see those now let's get into the juicy stuff the fourth point is turrets they're changing the turrets once again the shield duration have increased meaning if you know, pay attention to the last patch notes, meaning you can get more gold, like more time you can get those gold, right? And now they remove the effect of the 50% damage reduction provided by the shield. Instead, the shield now provides a 60% range damage reduction, 30% melee damage reduction. Basically, if you're a melee hero, you're able to do more damage to the shield. You're able to get more gold. If you're a marksman, you probably get a little bit less. But nonetheless, you have more time to chip away the shield. Damage dealt by minions to shield went from 50 to 75. So it's easier to chip away the shield if you have you know, a minion wave. And also, if you remember the last patch, they changed all the first seven waves to Siege Minions, right? The range minion is gone now, it's just cannon minion coming out, which is the same thing as Siege Minion. So the damage they do to the shield is, has been increased. That means if you have the cannon minion wave or you have a minion wave, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to take down that tower, a lot easier to take down that shield, right? Along with the help of the minions. At the same time, you're getting a lot of gold. So they're really prioritizing people going to the side lane and start chipping with that shield. Middle lane tower is gonna be kind of hard, 
because how easy it is for people to rotate to mid and defend the lane. So usually the, the fights are gonna happen on the side lane, which is you know universal across all, all MOBAs. Now in Mobile Legends, we're seeing the same trend where they're adding a lot of mechanism to the turrets and encouraging fights on the side lane. Now we come to items. They have made a change to quite a bit of items. We're gonna start with Athena Shield. Number one is, can be triggered when taking magic damage. Reduce the magic damage taken by 25 for five seconds. You will be able to trigger this effect again only after leaving the combat for 10 seconds. Now, a lot to be questioned and a lot to be unpacked. Number one is, is the current shield from Athena Shield being completely taken away? Because from what I know, Athena Shield only has one passive, which is every 30 seconds, you know, you get a shield, you get this humongous shield, and it takes both physical damage and magical damage. But then in this description, it doesn't say like they actually removed it or not. It might be an add-on. I mean, if it's an add-on, they're really making Athena Shield OP, right? But let's say if it's not an add-on, if it's just a replacement. So basically now, the shield can only be triggered when taking magic damage. So if you're people all attacking you with like, you know, physical damage, then you're not gonna trigger Athena Shield's passive, right? It just, basically the shield does nothing. This item does nothing. It only works against magic damage. And then reduce the damage taken by 25 for five seconds. This is also very obscure. Cause like, what does it mean? Is it like 25 points damage per damage instance? Or does it mean like 25%? What does it mean by reduce magic damage taken by 25 for five seconds? Cause this is so just weak, you know? Like Mobile Legend really need to hire a better translator or just have, have someone else to write their patch notes to explain shit better. Next thing is you'll be able to trigger this effect again only after leaving combat for 10 seconds. So in the middle of the combat, you will only have Athena shield once. And then afterwards, you have to leave combat, it means you, you cannot auto attack, you cannot do anything. The only time when this happens is when you're rotating from mid to top lane or when you're going back to base, when you're dead, coming back from base, then you get a new passive. But then you're gonna reduce magic damage by 25. Again, I don't know what that means, right? D different meaning, different interpretations can mean completely different things. If it reduce magic damage taken by 25%, damn, that's huge. If it's only reduced 25 per damage instance, it doesn't really do anything. Imagine this going against Eudora. Imagine this going against Cecilian. They're gonna one-shot you no matter what. What is reducing 25 damage gonna do in front of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 damage per instance? You know what I'm saying? But I like the general direction of where the developers are going with item changes. They're making magic defense item uh, more clear, more specific towards magic damage, and they're making physical defense item more geared towards physical damage, right? So we're gonna come to the next point, which is anti cuirass The unique passive deter doesn't reduce magic power of the enemy anymore. At least that's what I think they wanted to say, right? Because currently the anti cuirass reduce not only physical damage, but also physical power, also magical power of the person that touched you. Now, reduces the physical attack of the enemy by 10% instead of 6%. So if you stack three stacks of 10%, that's 30%. Imagine taking anti Karas to go against like a fighter. If they have a Leo Mord, if they have any fighter that constantly try to kill you, and you're like a squishy assassin or a marksman, I don't know, take anti Karas, right? You will be no problem. 30% damage reduction from this fighter. I mean, that's insane. Or you can just have support takes it because this is reducing the person's attack damage rather than uh, the, the damage you receive. So if you have support takes and the support takes damage from the fighter, their physical attack will be reduced by 30%. That's a lot. Okay, that's a lot. Again, the developers took away the magic power reduction from this item, which I completely agree. I think the items should be more separated, have a better job and more crystal job that they need to do, each item need to do. So this is definitely, you know, a shot in the right direction. The next thing, the seventh point is in draft pick, after choosing your own hero, you can tap ask help to show your win rate. Oh, thank God, right? We have asked for this for a long time. After they change the update, we can no longer show win rates after you pick a hero. So let's say I'm like United States number two Hanzo, and then I want to show that I'm United States number two Hanzo after I picked it, but then there was another guy who really want to play a marksman, play a Clint or something, and then I really don't want this person to play Clint, like what I'm gonna do? But now they finally changed the word, you can show your win rate again, so at least I can prove to this dumbass, hey, by the way, 
I'm United States number two Hanzo, and then I want to play hyper carry mid. So give me that position. So I like the I like the changes. Finally, we got this back. The number eight is base damage of retribution has been increased. Went from a 1440 to 7020 at the highest. Now this is gonna be pretty huge because that's a 280 damage increase. And also, if you didn't know, if you're a jungler and then you're hitting a jungle monster, you can now see the number of the HP, the HP number showing on the top of the HP bar pretty clearly. Now you can also see see how much damage you can do with the retribution as a number showing right under the button that you can click for retribution. I mean, I think all those changes are really, really nice because it allows you to execute a buff at a much more accurate position. You know, the execution line that we talked about in what Pro Never Tell You series can now be more accurate when you execute it. So I like the changes and it also make retribution more useful late game. So you can take retribution to contest like Turtle Lord because we know a lot of people do a lot more damage with their skills in late game compared to Retribution. Retribution become a lot less relevant in the late game. And then after this change, I think it's gonna bring it back just a little bit. Still, I mean, when it gets to super late game, you know, heroes with super intense skills are still gonna be very powerful. Number nine, attack speed of the first seven waves CG minion reduced by 10%. Their damage to heroes doesn't decay now. Movement speed of minions on two side lanes reduced by 10%. Okay, very interesting. Before the map changes, they're making changes like this, which I personally don't know how I feel about it. First of all, is attack speed of the first siege minion is reduced by 10%. So they attack a lot slower, so they can't hurt tower as much. Another thing is the movement speed of minions are two less two silence reduced by 10% again. This will make invade or cutting wave a lot easier at level one. Again, right, just like before, we have complained about this issue. I've complained about this issue multiple times to developers. That's why they increase the movement speed because the fighter are so easily cutting the wave and because they're easy to cut the wave, they can also invade your blue buff at the same time. Thanks to the, the flawed map that we have right now. So before the map get changed, I don't know how I feel about this, you know. I, I completely agree the minion waves should move at the same speed on all three minion waves. So last time they increased the silent minion waves movement speed, I don't know how I felt it, felt about it. Now, they're, ch they're reducing the back, which, you know, I still don't know how I feel about it because the map is just so bad right now. The last thing that I want to touch up on from this patch is a Clint rework. I actually did not pay attention to Clint rework before. Maybe it was changed before. I don't know. I thought it was changed in this patch. The Clint rework is weird. I mean, I feel like his early game damage is a little bit better. His wave clear. Still, it's a little bit weird. Before Clint has his mechanism where he go against a marksman, he can send a cloud onto the marksman. The marksman is going to miss a lot of auto attack. Now he completely lost that mechanism, right? Now he just have a wave clear mechanism, which allows him to boo, 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 which is similar to Granger, to, to clear the wave and then, you know, do his thing. I don't know. What do you guys think about it, right? Leave a comment down below. Let me know your opinions on this 10 pointers. Uh, share it with you guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn that bell on to all notification bells so you do not miss our latest videos and live streams and giveaways. At the same time, make sure to check out our new vlog channels, which highlights all the amazing food that I eat on stream from Dave's Kitchen. Finally, the chef has been revealed. You guys should definitely take a sneak peek and see how the food are made and how we're enjoying the food behind the scenes. So with that, I'm Dave signing off. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now. Just for